In this video, I'll show you how to remove the brine valve and replace it, what to look for there. I'll show you how to take off the top plate here and remove the seals and spacers and then replace them. Notice that the timer mechanism has been removed from the control platform so that I can access all of this. Now to start, notice I have on sanitary gloves because I'm touching the wetted parts inside the control valve. I do not want to cross contaminate. Never put unprotected hands inside someone's water system inside what are called the wetted parts. The parts that actually touch the pile of water on this source. Okay? We'll start by removing these three bolts. These are a 5 16 bolt but they also have a Phillips head screw in them. To do that I'm just going to use a very light 12 volt drill. I have the torque setting at 50 percent because I've got metal screws and a composite body. Always set your torque setting down at 50 percent so you don't risk over tightening anything. All right, Making sure my drill goes the right way. Quickly remove these. See there? Set those aside, of course, so we don't lose them. This plate lifts off. Next thing you do is remove the piston. What you want to do is start removing this. You want to make sure that there's, there's seals and spacers inside this body. You want those to stay in place after you pull this off because if you're doing a diagnostics you want to see if there's debris in there, if there's any plugging, any rip seals, if there's something mechanically going on inside this control valve that we need to be aware of because we're doing a troubleshoot, we're doing a diagnostics and be able to see what's going on we need to see how everything lays inside the system. So just gently lift this up See how that moves up and down on this rod? Okay, lift that up. Get your fingers down in here and hold your seals in place and then gently remove the piston. You would want to look at this piston. Look for any scratching, any wear, any damage at all to this which would allow water to escape around the seals inside the control valve. If that were to happen, the system would malfunction. So that's the first thing you look at. That's your piston. Inside here are seals and spacers and it it starts with a seal It ends with a seal. All right, so seal Spacer Seal See that seal spacer seal all the way through to the bottom of the control remove those I always find it's best get a light, look down, examine what's going on inside the control. It's difficult to see. I'll pull this back. See down in there? You want to examine your control looking for anything that's stuck in there, anything that's worn, anything that looks out of place. Another seal, another spacer. If you're going to put a new assembly in, a new set of seals and spacers, you'll have the correct amount. Always remember to start with a seal. Okay, almost there. There, got my last seal out. Again, I will do an examination of the inside of my system, looking for any wear, looking for anything that looks out of place. 
everything looks good. This is the brine valve. It's on O-rings. You just pull it loose. Okay, that's what it looks like. There's a little poppet on here that needs to be in working order. That's what starts and stops the water flow from the brine tank. If that's damaged, you can be filling the brine tank when it's supposed to be turned off. So examine that. If that's in bad shape, just put a new one in. To put a new one in, make sure this O-ring's here, this O-ring's here, you get both O-rings. Take your silicone grease and just shine those up. Never glob silicone, just shine them up, all right? Get it shined up, set it back in place. Firmly put your thumbs on both sides and push, and it'll pop right back into place. We're going to put in our new seals and spacers, starting with the seal. Set that down inside the control valve. Again, take our trusty flashlight. Make sure that it, everything's where it's supposed to be. Setting flat. Calmly and patiently slide these home. Once it's in there, give it a little even pressure all around it to make sure it seats home. That's a spacer, another seal, and just continue that until all your parts are back in your control. You'll notice that when you get to the top, it's going to appear as if you have too much inside here. It's going to be going to look like it's too high. Well, it will compress when you put everything back together, and I'll show you how that all works. Seal spacer, seal spacer, seal. Okay. Let me get this turned around so you can see a little better. Get our flashlight. It's difficult to see, but it looks like when you look at this that it's too high. When you put the piston back in, okay, you slide your piston back in. See that? That looks like it's too high. It's supposed to look that way. I'll show you what's going to happen when we put this back down. Get everything back in place. You can only put this on one way. This goes where the brine valve is. This notch right here that the timer will slip onto, it's kind of keyed so the timer will slide back on over this notch. If you put that in upside down, of course, not going to work. Only goes on one way, can't get it wrong. Put your bolts back in. If you've done this before, you'll know where your bolts go. If you haven't, if it's your first time, take a picture. I always teach my service people, take a picture if you've never torn it apart before so you know how it goes back together. If you take a picture and you know how it was before you started, you'll know how it should be when you're done. Now if you've ever changed a tire, we don't tighten up all the lugs one at a time, right? We go around in a crisscross pattern. We do that here too, just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. As I do that, this plate will push everything down where it belongs. So everything compresses, everything's in place, everything's tight and snug. Hear the drill slip? That's why I set the torque down at 50% so I don't damage anything. So that's how you remove the piston seals and spacers and the brine valve from a 6.5 control.